Welcome to our podcast, It's About Payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and Walter William Duncan III. Whether you're new to the payroll game or a seasoned veteran, we have something for you. Man, I'm good. Just another day, another dollar, another day in the life of the payroll pro. Day in the life in the payroll pro. Yes, How sir. How you doing, man? How about you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I've been I've been noticing so much stuff, payroll pro, and you know, like you say payroll pro, it made me think of it. The payroll profession is really is blowing up. You know what I mean? And I know we keep saying it. We keep saying it, but I just I think I really see it out there. Yeah. All different countries are making moves and you know, bringing it to more of the forefront. Oh, Christina Hagney, we were just talking about her. She yeah. did she just did a TikTok. Somebody asked her, "Hey, can we really get into payroll career? Can you talk more about that?" Nice. Yeah, and I yeah, go check it out. I, I think I re- reposted it. And it was cool. It was just like, "Yeah, you can." Like how I was so excited to see her talking about that like just yes payroll is a career pay you can get into payroll i was just telling you about a new system that's coming out that is showing all these new perks and all these things and yeah man it's just so exciting i'm going to that blockchain conference this week and i'm interested to see if we can connect some dots on payroll and blockchain man it's just again just where we're going with it there's a lot of advancement when yes. it comes to payroll, right? There's a lot of opportunity. There's room for grow for growth, and it's a wide open lane still. Yeah, it really yeah. is, man. It really is, and appropriately so. We're talking about building a payroll team today. Yeah. So that is the show today, folks. Where and the first question is like, do I need a payroll team? And how many? Then it's like, how many people do I need? Yeah. And if you're at that point, great question. That means you're you're chugging along, you're growing as a company, or maybe mm-hmm. just changing. And we've done the research. And do you remember what was that like ratio of people to payroll professionals? Oh, I don't know. Head count. My head. Yeah, I can. Kind of so, it. yeah, no, no, I, I feel like it was it was one payroll professional for every fifteen hundred to two thousand employees, something like that. That's what you need as a payroll person to run your or to run your payroll. So if you have two thousand employees, and at that point you one, you probably should have somebody's been doing payroll for sure. Yep. You outsourced, right? Are you in house? We're gonna talk. That's gonna be another episode. We're gonna cover whether you should do in house or outsource. So check back for that one. But this episode is just building your team, and it's okay. How many people do I need? Do I need a one person? Do I need two people? So there is a ratio for that, and I'm pretty sure once once we find it, we'll share it. But it is yeah. it's one person for every 1,500 to 2,000 employees, and that's like the rule of thumb that you should use. So let's say you so, got it, you found it. Yeah. So ADP has an article out there. They say a full time equivalent employee mm-hmm. can handle payroll tasks for. It basically almost 1,500 employees. Like you there were we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah 1,500, and you could probably stretch them to 2,000, depending on the organization you're in. Look, yeah. most folks get stretched way beyond that. That's when the trouble lies in. That's when you, you're having trouble and you don't know where it is. and it, It's because you're overwhelming your payroll person. That's probably why. And like yeah. you, They can't keep up. They can only keep up with a certain amount of manual tasks and exceptions that they have to accommodate for in the payroll and all these mm. things. Got to keep that in mind when you're thinking about your team and building or the first step is like, all right, how many people do I need? Yeah. How many so, people do I need? Yep. Yeah. And then all, oh, I'm just going to pull up my notes here. Okay. And then once you've figured that out, do I need a team? How big do I need a team is clearly defining their roles and responsibilities because payroll often either sits with HR or accounting. There's blurred lines there because they want to take advantage of that resource and take advantage is probably not the right word. They want to leverage you that body, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, can you do this as well? Can you do that? Can you do this? But that is when it's really important for the payroll professional to know where their lane is and get educated Mm -hmm. and you can't 
you shouldn't, as a yeah. payroll person, you shouldn't be entering, like setting up an employee profile and also paying on that profile. Yeah, there needs to be segregation of duty, right? Exactly. Yeah. Now, I remember you telling me you did both at once upon a time. That's because I reported to HR, though. And that's right. why I had to do both. Right, but... <laughs> In the, I would imagine there was some check and balance there. Somebody was checking your work. Mm. More so, hopefully, <laughs> we're gonna okay. <laughs> but yeah. that's where you should. So if you do, folks, if you do have one person that's doing it all, then somebody has to really be checking their work. Hey, let's go back to the perfect example of our Chicago criminal payroll yes. mastermind yes. over here. Yes. That we I'm gonna talk about pretty much for the rest of the season. And he's a perfect example, right? And again, unfortunately, his boss had a lot, had a learning point there, a learning moment there, because they should have been checking their work, or maybe, maybe I don't know, but whatever. That oh, there should have been some oversight there to keep that person honest, because yeah. trust but verify. Yeah. So same deal, right? You want if you're doing it all in an organization, then you need some good checks and balances. As a business owner, if you're going to ask this person to do your payroll, but, mm -hmm. oh, wait, can you do, also do this and that? And and, it, and again, if you're a small company, yeah. that payroll person does usually wear a lot of hats. They're the benefits person. They're the HR person. They're mm -hmm. this. They're that. They do a bunch of different things. But that just means you got to be a little bit more. You have to hold them accountable. You got to check some balances. and. Yeah. You got to have more scrutiny over their position, not the person, the position. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but, uh, I, I, that, that plays into the next thing, which is strong leadership. So when you build this team, you want to make sure you get a strong leader. Yeah. So I, that could be from a could be in multiple facets. So that could be the head of HR, depending yep. on how your payroll and your company is structured. That could be the head of HR that oversees the payroll manager or payroll director, however you have it structured, or it could be the CFO yep. that oversees the payroll department. Yep. Uh, you want to have that strong leadership in place to manage those employees, ensuring that everybody is working towards the same goals. Yes. Ensure that there's a good understanding of the payroll processes and be able to communicate yes. effectively to the different team members and other departments, right? Yep. There goes that word communicate again. Yep. We just, we just talked about communicate on the last show. Communication's yeah. big key just in everything we do and especially in the people, especially in payroll. You do want folks to to be able to communicate clearly. They don't have to speak well. They just mm -hmm. have and I don't I say that as hey, it could be a stepping stone, right? It could be just you need somebody to be able to write a good email. Speaking yeah. well can come later. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's the next one? Adic adequate training. Yes. Huge yes, for yes, payroll. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that I ask for, or what, or let me rephrase. Yeah. Even, yeah. Even as a payroll provider, one of the things I always ask for when I was interviewing in the interview, I say, do you have a budget for education or training? Okay. Because payroll people, it's a constant thing. You constantly have to be learning some stuff. Continued right? education. Yeah. Cont oh, it's, and it's so true in this profession. Some professions it may not be so true, right? But this one is, man. Like we, we it's right, there's just all kind of compliances and regulations and rules and laws and best practices and compliance and new rules and laws yeah. and best <laughs> And it's all of that. And it's on repetition. It's on repeat. It's all year long. It's every year. Yep. So a good training program or resources for training and keep mm -hmm. yourself engaged. And this is what we tell folks as well. Invest in yourself. If your company is not doing it for you, shame on them. Yeah. But invest in yourself and move on because you want to get with a company that believes in their people, that allows them the opportunity to train, right, and learn more mm -hmm. things. Even if they're not providing it directly, like, oh, we're holding a pay. No, they're not going to always hold a payroll class for you, but it's up to you to go and get the dollars. Say, hey, boss. If I go take this class, can I submit this for reimbursed expenses? Can I be re reimbursed for this? You know what I mean? A, most a good boss is going to be like, no, 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 let me pay that for you. Don't even worry. You know what yes. I mean? So as the business owner and as the training should, even though you may not over oversee or supervise all the trainings that go on in your company, you want to make sure that just as something that you emphasize though 
in, in a general or more broad sense. Like, hey, we're always teaching our people. We're always progressing as the company grows. We're making sure that our, our people grow as well. Yeah. So again, it's as a business owner, you want to make sure that your payroll professional, your payroll team is getting that adequate training, even if it's something that you're just having minimal oversight over. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, regular communication, yeah. <laughs> regular team meetings. Yep. That's, I think is this is a big, and you might say, gosh, you just said communication. Yeah, because it's, it's a big call out in this day and age when hybrid workforce and remote workforce has become reality. Yep. And you have to stay in touch with your remote team members. They're, it's going to continue to evolve, right? Because now yeah. folks are creating all these tools and all these best practices and all these things that you have to follow. But at the yep. end of the day, just stay in contact with your team. You know what I mean? However that works for you, however, whatever works for you and your team, that's what you got to do. Because you yeah. don't want to talk to the your boss and then be like, oh, well, when's the last time you talked to whoever on your team? Oh, I don't know. Last. What? Crazy. You want to be like, oh, no, I just got off the phone with them. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Something like that. Be methodical and do things on deliberate. That's what I meant to say. Be deliberate about communicating with your team. And doing it on a regular basis. So how could how could a I know it's the job of the manager, right? Make sure that's done. But since we're talking about payroll from the business owner, yes. how would they enforce regular communication? Just because it's been a struggle, right? Yeah. Even in our careers, yep. different organizations we've been at, communication has always been oh one God. of the main issues. As an owner, I think you got to build a culture for it because I do like some of these posts that are going out now that are like companies are putting rules on how many meetings that you can have in a day. What prompts a meeting? They're like outlining criteria to say, hey, if it doesn't meet this criteria, just get on the phone. Yeah. Just yeah. have a conversation. You don't need to have a meeting. Send an email. If it doesn't mm -hmm. meet this criteria, how many jokes have we seen? Oh, just got out of a meeting that could have been an email. Yeah. And it's so true. So, and it's more true now because of the Zoomification of everything. And we're on Zooms all day and not for nothing, man. That is draining. You don't think about it ahead of time. You, I'll be on a Zoom all day. And we are on Zooms all day. It's so draining. Yeah. So, anyway, the company, I really appreciate these companies now that are putting guidelines around how many meetings you should have, what defines a meeting, when you can have meetings. Hey, stay engaged, but don't overdo it. Yeah, because yeah. it's like I tell my kids: too much of anything will kill you. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. What else? We Number the fifth one is use of technology. What I think this one is saying that you need to evolve, right? As businesses and times change, we're mm -hmm. gonna see more AI, mm -hmm. GPT, mm -hmm. more. We're gonna see more robust payroll systems come out. We're gonna see even the ones that are out there now. They're mm -hmm. gonna be changing. They're gonna be evolving with the times yeah. this is saying that as we as you go along as a business owner you want to make sure that you take advantage of what options there are out there from a technological Techno yeah. standpoint yep. so you want to be sure because there's some things that can help you streamline processes improve your accuracy that make sure that you're staying compliant and in that way you can stay up to date on things too yeah from a standpoint, from a certain standpoint. Yeah. Yep. Or just go use Valor Payroll and call it a day. Yeah, Valor Payroll. <laughs> but yes, no, that, that is absolutely true. <laughs> Utilizing technology, right? Keep asking whys and you want to get to root cause, right? Yep. Those are the buzzwords. Yep. So if you do that, you if you're constantly doing that, you will always find the solutions you need. Absolutely. So build a culture of always pushing the limit pushing on your processes do we have the best process do we have it are we in the best shape we can be absolutely yeah and the next one is flexibility yeah. the payroll team should be able to adapt to changes in the organization's operations and processes as well as changes in laws and regulations yeah so true man yeah so like for this speaks volumes to me right even though <laughs> oh, even go, though it's, go for even, it. yeah. even though it's even though it's not one of it doesn't seem like it's one of the bigger things but as a business owner you want to make sure that you allow your team enough runway to make these changes 
to be able to be flexible, mm-hmm. right? So, so you don't hamper a uh, stunt or whatever. You don't come in between what the mission is and what the goal is, mm-hmm. right? You have to be able to understand and trust the people that you've put into place for your payroll team and trust that they're doing the right thing by the company. Yeah. So you need to allow them to be, to have that flexibility because Brian was saying earlier, laws are going to change. Mm-hmm. This are going to change. There's going to be increases in this and SUI and all this other stuff, the yep. inflation, the recessions, all this other stuff that's going to impact can impact payroll and people's livelihood. Yep. So you need to, as a business owner, you need to be able to make sure that you, that's something that you grace your payroll with. Yes. Yeah. I thought about it purely from the payroll person's perspective. You, thank you for covering that because that th- this season is about the employer, the business owner. So I, but I forget, right? Because I'm like, I just want to serve my payroll people. And just to give you that nugget as a payroll person listening to this, the flexibility for you should be the opposite, right? You have to flex to what the company needs. Absolutely. And maybe they heard you. Maybe you made your case and they're still like, hey, I can't do it right yeah. now. But as long as you made your case, you raised the red flag, you went mm-hmm. on record with mm-hmm. what you think should happen. Yeah. Okay. I've lost many <laughs> opportunities. That's yes. why Walt is laughing. I've yeah. lost many opportunities because I didn't go on record for what I believed yeah. was right. Okay. So as a payroll professional, there's a way to politely, professionally go on record for what you believe is right. Yeah. And that's it. And guess what? The flexibility comes from you as a professional is if they don't adapt, oh, I'm going to do this right now. Just say, say, hey, no problem. I've made my case. And then you yep. keep moving on. You keep doing how, how you're being asked. You got a job to do. So, yes, the flexibility goes both ways. This se- yep. season is about the business owner. So as an owner, listen to Walt. And my little nugget was for the payroll person. Great nugget, man. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> oh man, the next collaboration. Oh Huge. yes. So, Huge. how will we put this in a sense from, I guess, from a business owner? How would this one really fall under? under yes, for the team. You know why? Because owner has to understand that payroll has to work with the all everybody. Yeah. Because think yeah. about it. If the owner was like, "Well, you do payroll. Why are you talking to HR? Why are you talking to finance? Why are you talking to operations? Uh-huh. What do you need yeah. to be talking to them about?" Yep. If mm-hmm. they don't understand that a cross-functional team is necessary, right? Yeah. Then, yeah. then, then you don't have it. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. So I think that's where the collaboration has that it has to happen, and you, the business owner has to know has to understand that it has to happen. Great. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think that's where it is. And last, but certainly not least, <laughs> should have been the yeah. first one. Really. <laughs> <laughs> could have been. It yeah. could have been emphasis mm-hmm. on accuracy and compliance. Yes, that's great, man. Like you, you as a business owner want to make sure that your payroll team is focused on being accurate, focused on being compliant and your and the people that you hire should do that. Yeah, they should be. They should hold themselves accountable. The manager should hold the team members accountable to do what's right at the Mm -hmm. end of the day. Right. To make sure that errors are minimized, to ensure that all regulations and timelines are met. Mm -hmm. So that. That's what it is. You, in general, should hold your people accountable to make sure that the business is not going to be hit with fees and late filings. Yes. It's not even necessarily your payroll team only. It could be the payroll software that you use. Yep. You need to hold them accountable. It could be vendors, third yes, parties. vendors. Yeah. All those things, you can have an emphasis on holding those different these people accountable. I'll yep. give you a great example from IRS. and. Yeah. This should really sum it up for business owners. IRS will tell you, we don't care who you do, who's doing your payroll. You're still responsible. Yep. <laughs> yes. Okay. So yeah. you can try to use this. Oh, my payroll provider messed me up. That's nice because now you owe double. Yeah. Because right? now you lost that money there, but you still owe me money now. Mm-hmm. They don't care. You know what I mean? It's like that Steve Harvey thing we talked about. His accountant mm-hmm. stole money from him. The IRS doesn't care. No. Nope. You still owe me money. Yep, that's so, why Wesley Snipes went to jail. Oh my <laughs> goodness! Yeah, these guys and they don't learn their lesson. But anyway, so if, if think of business owners, emphasis on accuracy and compliance. Yeah, and if you're an arrogant owner, oh, they better be. No, 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 
you better make sure they are. You have to because yes. they're it's not their business, my friend. They mm -hmm. you, the business owner, are gonna hang for that. Yes. Okay, unless you can prove that they were maliciously doing something, like my boy over in Chicago. Yep. Then it's on you. It's on the owner. As an owner, yeah. you know what I mean. Like you, and there's plenty of those leaders that go around passing the buck. Yeah, oh, is he, my, my yeah. team, right? Yeah, it's on leadership, right? I'll say not necessarily just the owner. It's on leadership because there's some cases that it's not necessarily the owner or the CEO signing the tax documents it might be the facts the coo it might be the yep. cfo yep you know, it, it's one of the officers of the company yep <laughs> even if you outsource it even yep. if you outsource it 100 percent, you gotta yep. make you, you, unless you're outsourcing it to a company that's gonna take liability yep. which is trending i see some companies now taking liability for something in key areas which is very interesting yep. but unless you have that setup you gotta know and then that goes back to what are you picking your vendors, you're setting up your system, you're setting up your payroll mm -hmm. team. Were well, you gonna do that? And it and this whole deal ties back into pillar number one. Yeah, picking yep. training right, pay right. Yep. Five pillars of payroll. Yes. Go check pillar number one, which happens Great to be the out. most listened to show. Right? Is this still yeah. the number one show? Let me. I'll tell you right now. So surprisingly enough, and it's a good show. I guess it's a great topic. But it's a, it's our number one listen to show. No, pillar number one, talent, and it this whole deal just kind of refers back to this. So if you if you have any more questions, it's still our number one. Look at yeah, that, still number one, yeah. still number one, pillar number one, talent. So talent and training, talent and training, and this yeah. this ties right back into it. How do I structure my payroll team? Do I need a payroll team? So if you do, then go ahead and hit up the five pillars and listen to those five pillars because that will help you structure your payroll team yeah. in a more in-depth manner. You'll get to learn some things about what payroll should look like so yeah. that you can hold your people accountable. Yeah. But yeah. At, at the end of the day, that's what it, it, it basically boils down to, right? It's the people. It's the people that, that you surround yourself with, that you yep. put in your business, that yep. that you put in pl put, uh, in places of or positions of influence or impact. Yep. And it's about the people. So something that that resonated with me that I got from you is that I'll hire a person based on their attitude, not necessarily their aptitude, but you train because you can train, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Attitude is, and that, and look, I, that's something I've learned in recently because I always thought you just focus on the skill set and then go from there, right? And I, look, I'll be honest with you. That's how I hired you. I hired you on skills, right? Mm -hmm. You answered my questions well, right? You answered those phone questions well. That's how you got in the door. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you were also going to be a good person. It wasn't until later in my career that I learned that flip is oh wait a minute this person is not cool even they can be really smart they can have the real skill and it's right work like after i hired you going through all everything that we went through together in our career is how i learned that thing man and it's just yeah. so yeah it's a wolf point man and hire for attitude teach the skill yeah now that's not to say don't go ahead and hire anybody from any discipline no not necessarily but if you find a a junior payroll person that has a great attitude versus a senior one that has a horrible attitude. Come yeah. on now. You got to hire that junior and teach them. Yep. You know what I mean? I'd rather spend more time like that. And I've had, yep. and those are some of the best folks that I work with is they're hungry. They want to learn. Absolutely, they're yes. eager to learn. They can do more. They want more. I love working with those folks, man, because I can train. It, it takes me a little bit longer, but I don't mind. Yeah. And then sometimes because, and we might be going a little in the weeds here, a little Sorry. You know, left field, but something that I noticed is that you may get someone who's more senior, but they may come from, from the position of not being as teachable. Yes. Not because they're more set in their ways. Yes. And yep. it's, it's, it might be a little harder to get through to them and mold them in, in how the, in the way that the company needs them to be. So, yep. That's some of the difficulty that I've seen when it comes to hiring people who are more established in the payroll field. Yep. And it might not be a good fit for them. 
they may need to go be a lead or a manager somewhere else. Oh yeah. Instead of coming to be a payroll specialist at your current company. So it's all about picking the right people. Right? Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and, and now I clicked what you're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be careful because when, if you put job posts out there and as a business owner, this is mm-hmm. probably, you know what? Great call out, man. It makes me think of something here. Mm-hmm. Um, as a business owner, if you've never overseen payroll, if you've never done, gotten to this point, maybe your accountant had done it and to you, for you at that point, I would get a recruiter. I would get a payroll recruiter or a finance or HR recruiter that had some recruiter that has experience hiring for payroll people and let them vet for you because you may mess around and get some, you may mess around, and pick the wrong person. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you want to, and, and look, they could talk a good game in the interview and yep. you can answer a few questions and boom, Hey, I hired you and you turn out to not know a thing. Yep, I've been finessed in my career. We've been people. finessed. We've been yes. fin- both of us. We've been finessed. It happens. It happens. Yeah. So you gotta put. That's why we developed the five questions and or five or ten questions. Not so much the questions, but the step of doing the phone interview first. Mm-hmm. This was before phone interviews were popular. Now it's like you could get a job without even leaving your house. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But we did. We developed this screening interview. I even did it. When I was when I had recruiters, because when I learned with some of my recruiters, I realized that they don't know a thing about payroll. Yeah. So then it's like, wait a minute, I have to vet them again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just it's it is a big task, man, and it's something to really consider. And maybe that's why pillar number one is so popular is talent. Um, and you should definitely be mindful, right? And just be deliberate about how yes. you hire this person L- listen to the show and listen to many shows and do some research because it is a key role in your organization and it will be important for you as you grow to pick the person that's going to grow with you because yes. they're right because i've been part of organizations where the i've met some walked into something and my boss was like no nah, i'm not yeah. i'm good i'm about to retire I'm passing the baton to you. You know what I mean? I'm good. And that's what happens. And that and is so you want to hire somebody that wants to grow. Yeah, you're right. So Let's yeah. We, anywho, I think that's it, folks. Yeah. Oh, building a payroll team. Go ahead and listen to the five pillars. What else we got? Oh, that we are gonna do a show about whether you need to outsource or yep. whether you can do it in house, right? Yep. Meaning, do you go hire a valor payroll or do you build it with, from within and just get a, a system and you work the system? Yeah. And also know that it may change over the years. Yes. And that model. Yeah. Yes. Gosh, thank you, bro. Yeah. And be fl- and that, that's where that flexibility comes in because Absolutely. you have to be mindful that it could change. You could hire somebody now because you're good and everything's purring. But boom, what if you just had this growth and now it blew up and you're like, wait a minute. Like we always say, what got you there may not get you there. Absolutely. So keep that in mind, folks. I hope this helped the uh, business owners out there. Every Listen, payroll folks, you guys, this helps because we just, just look at it from a different angle, right? You'll be a yeah. better employee by understanding what your bosses and what your owners need and are yep. looking for. Yep, so, absolutely. Yeah, man. Anything else, Walt? No, um, that's it. All right, cool. Cool, cool. On a side note, if anybody knows how to be like a journalist, because I want to go out and interview this guy that did the crime <laughs> yes. in Chicago. How do I go? <laughs> how do I do this? <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, folks. We love you. All right. Take we, care, uh... everybody. Thank you for listening to today's episode of our podcast. We appreciate you. We're grateful for you. And we hope that the information that we'll share with you will impact you as a payroll professional. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing. And most importantly, keep going.